Hey guys, Ramen King here, and I'm a little late with this Everhome review. I was hopefully going to get this out a little earlier, but something crazy happened to my save file and is something we'll touch upon later in the video. I've played about 20 hours of Everhome so far, and hopefully I can help you guys make an informed decision on whether you should get Everhome or not. Of course, we can't forget the big thank you to the game marketer for sending us a key via Lurkit. Everhome is an isometric farming game that follows a girl named Lily, who is searching for her missing sister Melanie. During the opening cinematic, we end up chasing who we think is her sister into some portal to another world, and then we wake up in a house, thinking it was all a dream. As we walk around the town and talk to all the townspeople, we start to realize something strange. People seem to know us, and are acting like we've lived here for a long time, but we have no memory on who anybody is. We also try to ask about our sister, and most people didn't even know we had a sister. Oddly, some people sometimes say weird things too that are a little off-key and akin to something like how it's easier to just let yourself forget things. Before I knew much about Everhome, I thought that it would be more story-driven where maybe you'd get a little more and more information and cinematics on your sister's location, but it's more something similar to Stardew Valley where the main story itself isn't super focused on and more focused about what life is like living in Everhome, befriending villagers, and making it further down into the underworld. Like I said, I'm about 20 hours in and 20 floors deep into the underworld mines and I don't feel super close to finding Melanie anytime soon. The devs did say that to push the storyline, you do have to go deep into the mines as well as befriend the villagers to progress through it, so it will definitely take some time to see any story developments. Being a farming sim, Everhome comes with being able to grow crops, take care of animals, befriending villagers, mining, and fulfilling bundles and quests. Growing fruits and vegetables feels fantastic in this game. Utilizing farming tools is really fast, and the animations are amazingly detailed. As somebody who wants to get the soil tilled and watering done in a short amount of time, the tools at the base level perform very quickly and doesn't feel like it's taking up half the game day to water them all. With the camera being at an angle, it can get kind of hard to see what crops have been watered or where you're pointing, but luckily there's a couple cool features to help with this such as the crops having an unhappy face when you haven't watered them, plus a grid feature in the options to help you aim. Aiming can still be tricky though, as occasionally Lily will turn the wrong way, and unfortunately there's no way to cancel the action without pressing escape to bring up the menu real quick. Also similar to Stardew, there are crows that will eat your crops, and this happens super often, so scarecrows are important. Once you have scarecrows though, the game oddly doesn't seem to indicate the radius. I did get a confirmation from the devs that this is a 3x3 radius, so hopefully they'll either put in a grid indicator or something in the description later on. Taking care of animals is pretty easy. You can either lay hay in the trough or feed them directly. It's probably better to feed them directly though because each animal has their own favorite food. You can lay different foods in the trough, but you really don't know which piece of food is going to which animal. You can also let out animals supposedly, but I can't tell if my door is busted because it opens halfway and the animals don't come out. Also the barn is huge and takes up a good quarter of your starter field. I can't imagine how crowded this place is going to be when you build in a Koopa and a silo. I really like all the villagers in this game. They all look so unique and have unique personalities to go along with this. It's a little weird though because I was expecting a lot of character events and cinematics featuring interactions between villagers, but I've only really encountered one where Hannah's house gets pelted by eggs by some random kid. I don't even think I've seen that kid since. In fact, the event isn't even mentioned again, and after talking to people, there's no real indication on why anybody would want to do that to poor Hannah. There's also a couple quality of life features that are really nice, like if you've built up enough friendship with a person, you'll be able to see them on the map. You can also track their likes, neutrals, and dislike gifts, whether you've talked to them, or hit the two gifts a week cap on the friendship list. Characters also have birthdays. In most games, they acknowledge that today's their birthday when you give them a gift, but in Everhome, they say they're normal lines, and I'm not even really sure if giving them a birthday gift boosts their friendship level. Also, there is no romance in this game. Personally, I don't think it needs it, especially considering Lily's mission in finding her sister, and Everhome is just a temporary place to live while she does this. Everhome's minds open up after a few days into the game, and is called the Underworld. Each major part of the Underworld has 20 levels, with checkpoints being hit every 5. To progress, you'll be fighting monsters, chopping trees and sticks, and mining rocks where each of these has a chance to open up a portal. When you first start off in the mines, your beginner weapon is a wooden club, 
and this thing really sucks. It's got this terrible short range that requires you to be practically next to the enemy. Sometimes you'll be right next to the enemy, miss it, and end up getting hit yourself. You do get more weapons later on from what I can tell at the Witch Fiona shop, but the items used to make them are really obscure and seem to be locked by having to go to even lower levels in the underworld. Mr. Bushman over here tosses exploding bow berries at you. You think you're safe to go in between them, but oh no, you're taking the hit if you even try. Most of the time, I'm finding myself kiting the enemies over and over, and it just takes so long with just the wooden club, especially in later levels. I just wish I could make a sword at Tomas the Blacksmith's, or be able to upgrade the club to make it a little easier. Since you'll be mining and fighting, you'll want to keep track of your stamina and health gauge. Be careful though, because each meter has this really misleading graphic where the bottom of the meter isn't actually the moving part of the gauge. When in doubt, you can just hover over your gauges to get a better numerical feel for how much you have left in each. If you ever feel like you want more time in the mines, there's also a day length option too to make your days longer. As I said before, Everhome isn't a super story focused game, so there's no main story quest to follow. You do, however, have a ton of quests that you can fulfill giving you rewards like money or items in return. There's a lot of stuff to do, whether it's taking on a quest from the job bulletin board, quests that Lily will think up herself, or a daily quest from the newspaper. The newspaper is also a really cool all-in-one feature. Not only can it give you a daily quest, but it also tells you the weather and has this little card game where you flip over the card and it tells you your luck for the day. I'm pretty sure as with other farming sims, your luck probably increases drops like in the mines or during foraging. My only slight gripe with turning quests is that if you happen to have the needed items in your bag and you're not really intending to give the person the items right away and just want to talk to the person, you can't because the items automatically get turned in as soon as you talk to them. I'd prefer if there was like a turn in button or having the person ask if you've brought the items. The graphics and animation in this game are just so charming. As somebody who loves really great pixel art, Everhome just feels so clean and polished. It has such great ambiance and atmosphere, especially with weather changes, where your house gets darker due to the fact it's raining outside. It's just so cool. Each character in Animal Sprite is just so cute too, and looks like they should live in a Game Boy, and I love it. Despite the very minor gripes you might find here in the video, there's bound to be an incoming fix or change for them as the devs are really good at taking feedback seriously. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I put off playing the game further for a bit because one day on a stream, I saw that I had randomly lost all my items and couldn't progress even past the save screen. I was super frustrated because I could no longer progress in the game and it was like the equivalent of having a PS1 memory card getting wiped out on you. Oops, did I just give away my age? So I reported it to the devs, got a response pretty quickly, and they amazingly had a hotfix out within the next couple days. So overall, Everhome is a very enjoyable farming sim. It's got tons of great farming, tons of quality of life features, lots of villagers with great personalities, and as long as you don't mind a little bit of slower farming and ongoing fixes, it might just be for you. If this video helped you out, make sure to leave a thumbs up down below and hit that subscribe button for more cozy and farming game reviews, and let me know down in the comments below if you'll be getting Everhome and what you think of it. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you all in the next video.